So here's a the more you know the tree guy, person, mm-hmm. person, um, not just wood, also leaves. Most trees do have leaves. I don't leaves, know if it can be a tree if it doesn't dirt. have leaves. Yeah. Well, whatever. I mean, you know, it's deciduous. I I don't, just don't like remember the human most body. Of it. It's made out of a lot of different fluids. There you go. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> uh, the leaves themselves, you wanted to show. There's a couple of things. It's yeah, kind of like an at. underpainting sort of situation. Exactly. This is. Um, it goes by a few names. The Grizel in watercolor. We know it as a sketch style in miniature painting, but yeah, you take, you got black and grays and whites. In this case, I've used black and ivory to varying densities, create these different effects, and then just toning over that. Mm -hmm. You know, a situation like imagine you're looking inside of a vehicle and everything is gray inside of this car. And then you just unroll whatever color of tint you want over that. Everything underneath that still has this dimension and different light values Mm -hmm. and you just toning it out so that's that's one thing we're covering and then um just kind of style points i'm painted these leaves in a specific way because i'm trying to make this tree look evil right right yeah yeah and so you you know you're, you're showing that you're not layering necessarily opaque paint over opaque paint and building up in the situation you're doing some work on the leaves underneath and then coating it all in a color and the reason for that is to tie the leaf all together and oh, yeah. not have it. Yeah. And it, 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 I, it looks good. Yeah. Try it and see. The foliage. What about that foliage? And how can I achieve some quick yet cool results? I thought about this a little bit. And uh, I'm going to show you a couple things. The first thing is value sketching basically creating a monochromatic or you know two-tone base coat and then filtering over that with um, any kind of paint. I'm going to use contrast paint. I would encourage you to just experiment and see what works for you. I have the contrast paints available so we'll try that. So if you uh, look at his loincloth here, I've got this cool uh, leafy pattern. And I'll just take some of that ivory, Vallejo buff, pressing very lightly. I'll draw some lines right down the middle along the edges and maybe pull some veins out from these leaves. Um, I want to explain something about these brush strokes though for that. We'll refer back to our uh, plastic um, sheet that still has details from a previous video on it. It's like we do more than one of these in a day. So what I'm doing is pressing down and lifting up as I trail away. I show you this sideways to really overemphasize this brush stroke. What I'm doing is going kind of down and then curving back out like kind of like a whipping motion. You can see the result. I've got the thick line and then it gets lighter and thinner as I swoop and pull away. So that's how I'm applying these brush strokes. Of course, on a more microscopic level, I'm overemphasizing it on that uh, color swatch for everybody. Yeah, we'll call it a color swatch. So I'll continue texturing, patterning this leafy loin out however I see fit. Maybe you could look online at some pictures of dead leaves, alive leaves. Just get a little inspiration, get your eye on the subject matter to kind of uh, motivate and inspire you. Sometimes it helps just taking a look at some real life reference material instead of the uh, often cartoonish images that my mind will generate. So we'll just continue doing this with this larger brush. I'll pull out a smaller, finer brush, maybe attend to some, uh, of course, finer details. 
Pick out some of the edges, kind of make them look a little cracked, torn. Just adding these crispy, leafy textures. So we'll do a star fade and then come right back. And this will all be done, studio magic. All right, back, round two. So take a look. You can see um, there's a varying degree of intensity here where I've only used ivory on top of the black, but I have placed more ivory in specific areas to kind of bring up the ivory value, left it thin in some other areas. So I've just got this black and ivory sketch. I think it's kind of apparent from looking at it, but I just wanted to ex explain the what and why there. So I'll just take some uh, Dark Angels Green, Citadel Contrast Paint, and we'll just lay it down over the whole surface. Just like that. And you can see I instantly get all those varying uh, values, all the different sketches of ivory. That nice heavy body contrast paint has toned everything out. Uh, with, with enough variety that it looks pleasable to me. So I'm happy with that. Um, I also, in this video, wanted to talk about the foliage. It's kind of a quick step, the little saplings growing off the side of the model. So if we'll turn our attention, we'll just look at his arm here. You can see some already done here, and I'm sure we'll have some already done in the pictures. I know that they'll, they'll have to be done for the pictures. Um, for that, all I used for the uh, the stalks was combinations of this green and black, Vallejo black, and uh, Moot green from Citadel. That will be the stalks. And then for the center of the leaves, we'll get to that part. But it's just a mixture of Kato Red base and Kato Red highlight from P3. So I've created a 50-50 mix of black with Moot green. I want this these saplings to to look more like new growth. That's why I'm going for a lighter green. They look a lot younger that way, similar to orcs. That lighter the green, the younger the orc. If the rules of Gorkamorka still stand, we'll talk about that in another video. Moving up the scale now, some pure moot green. Keeping in mind from the previous video, we we're talking about applying some intentional textures. I'm going to be dragging the brush over the figure, over the little uh, bumps and knots in the stalk of the plant, create those textures. Decent. Um, for the leaves, I wanted to do something a little bit different, like this is a magical monster. I wanted it to have kind of this, obviously, a scary look. So I don't want to do fresh leaves. I'm thinking fall leaves. I'm thinking black leaves. Obviously flat black leaves would be kind of boring. Um, so I'm gonna add a little bit of that Kato red highlight and base, just kind of a, a brighter red. You know, it's just a red with a touch of orange into it. I'm gonna stipple that into the center of the leaves. First I'll paint them black, just like so. And we'll take a little bit of that red mixture. I emphasize a little bit. I'm going to take a little off of my brush and just press it into the crevice on each of these leaves. I may have to go back for a second pass just to increase the saturation, the value. But it's nice. I get these um, little kind of black uh, blood leaves. We'll call them blood leaves. Go back for another touch. And now I want to pick out the edges of the leaves. I'll break down to a smaller brush. We'll take just a touch of uh, Vallejo black and white, mix them together. I want this to be a decent jump up in contrast. So I'll go kind of on the lighter side. For the gray, just using the uh, the edge of the tip, 
of the brush just gently glide along the edge of each of these leaves here and there I will, I will jump up off the leaf just implying a little bit more of that crackled crinkled texture just have fun with it creating those accidental irregularities decent now that uh, red and orange mix it's desaturated a little bit it's gonna have a hard time showing its truest value on top of a black base coat so we just go add a little bit more paint get brighter and brighter and just do it to your own personal taste maybe you prefer it more bright and vibrant maybe you like it dark and gloomy grim dark whatever your preference is it's yours to take and experiment with it after these uh, values on the loincloth after the contrast is dried I might go and kind of do the same thing I'll uh, pick out the edges with a little bit of ivory again Try to line along the little veins in the, the middle of these leaves. Again, press very lightly. The heavier you press, the wider the tip of your brush becomes, the fatter the line. So it's just something to manage. Keep it in mind. Use it to your advantage. But yeah, just pulling it up a little bit. And voila, there you have it. Saplings and a uh, leafy loincloth with which to cover yourself in the jungle. Thank you for hanging out. Thanks to Uncle Adam and everyone at Tabletop Minions for having me. Um, if you want to catch up with me, I'm on, I have an Instagram account. I regularly post uh, work in progress and finished pictures. I also uh, stream on Twitch. You can find me there as well. Um, so that's the long form. You're, gonna, you're not going to see the, uh, the star fades and all the studio magic, but we have a lot of fun in the chat. And I've also been teaching classes out on the road. Uh, the best place to catch up with me in that sense is to visit my Facebook page. And um, yeah, just uh, keep your eyes peeled, and I'll catch you next time.